Hey, how's it going, people? It is The Hoff here, and today we are going to unbox, set up, and review the Aris Pro. Uh, it's the Aris Surfboard Max Pro. So, basically, what this is, is let me go ahead and open up the box. I got this on the deal from Best Buy Open Box. So I thought because it was a deal and the fact of the matter is I have a Netgear Orby, but if you haven't seen my last video, uh, I'm working on a divorce. Well, I should say divorce is final actually now. And I have to give it to my ex. And that is the best of the wireless AC routers that I had and went through and tested. So I figured I might as well look and see what's out there. And I was trying to get one for a review unit, but an open box deal populated. So here we go. We have it and here it is. So what this is, is a new wireless AX router. And this one is supposed to give you 6,000 square feet of coverage. Um, currently, I want to say this one is a 690 price point. Um, and it does the wireless AX standard that is 11,000. So what that means is all bands total are going to be 11 gigs for all bands total. Uh, but really you're gonna get 4.8 gigs for connecting to the uh, five gigahertz band. And the other five gigahertz band is used as a backhaul, just like the Nekia Orbi, which is why I wanted something like this, because it provides that backhaul and you can add a third if necessary to get more square footage, but two of these should be perfectly fine for my home. And this one has also some ethernet ports in there, which I will need to connect my TV downstairs. That was the main reason I needed this. My TV downstairs just doesn't do well with Wi-Fi. Um, in the box, you get the surface or the uh, Surfboard Max Pro Mesh Wi-Fi routers. You get an ethernet cable and then two power adapters for the one unit, uh, for each unit, I should say. Compatibility is supposed to work with all internet service providers, uh, should connect to existing moto and modem or gateway and it's backwards compatible. They have a mobile app, that's how you're gonna connect it. It's supposed to use uh, Bluetooth technology for connecting <coughs> and you can use the mobile app for iOS or Android. Um, in case you're wondering, it needs iOS 9.0 and above or Android 5.0 and above. Uh, the technical specs of this, so it's 1.8 gigahertz quad core, 64 bit ARM processor. It has three 4x4 Wi-Fi 6 radios, each with a 1.5 gigahertz ARM, Processing delivering up to 11,000 uh, for the wireless AX. And then it does backwards compatibility of 802.11a, b, g, n, and a, c. And then you have a WAN link aggregation capable of 2 gigabits per second. And then you have... Uh, the Wi-Fi certified and UL and all of that good stuff. Um, apart from that, I don't believe there is much else. It says easy installation, uh, quickly, easy to get to your mesh, performance optimization, test the speeds of your Wi-Fi network and discover the optimal placement inside of your home, and then network monitoring and guest network easy to create and manage your guest network. So very similar to what I have with the Neki Orbi in a wireless AC or a wireless AX fashion, whereas the Neki Orbi was wireless AC. So without further ado, let's get into it. And here I will go ahead and open it this way for you guys to be able to see so from my understanding this was listed as open box excellent condition so first let's validate what it comes with and the condition so here you have the 
Eris, and I don't think from looking at it before that either unit is different from the others, but let's go ahead and release them. So now the unit says anything is different. And then it does have setup instructions and requirement right here. And I will go through that in just a little bit. And then here should be down below. We have a ethernet cable and this one is cap 5E. So I don't know if I really need to, but just because I know it's out there, I may upgrade this cable to CAT8. And then we have power bricks for each of these. So what you really came here to find out is what speed you can expect on Wi-Fi for an increase from wireless AX and it looks like there's a bit of information in here so just in case let's open this up oh nope so this looks like those packaging stuff they give you so nothing there of any monetary value and we can set that to the side set that to the side and go ahead and set all of that to the side so what you want to know is comparing this to my Neko Orbi that is over there. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the video off and do a speed test with screen capture on my cell phone and show you guys what I currently get standing in this room. Then I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to show you what I currently get when I'm standing in front of the satellite area, sitting in front of the couch. So it's not directly in front of there. It's right next to my TV, which I would say is about 11 feet away from the satellite router. And I will do a speed test down there and show you both speed tests on screen capture. Then I will hook this up and I will show you guys what that looks like for speed tests. And I will do the setup in between and show you guys some of what the setup looks like and do the screen capture there. And I will screen capture what the speed test is after the setup of these. So without further ado, let's get right into screen captures for speed test and then setting up these. Okay, people. So here. We are starting the test of the Netgear Orbi. And this one is going to be from my office, which is basically kind of a arm length or a little more away from the Netgear Orbi where I sit at my computer. So that's the speed that I would get with my phone in the computer room as I'm playing on the computer. The next speeds are going to be from downstairs where I sit on the couch and I will basically be connected to my router that is up uh, up on the uh, fireplace downstairs so it's satellite secondary router so as you see these speeds are also pretty well comparable considering I have one gig per second connection now we're getting into the setup it's going to first say you need to download the app and once you download the app you will be asked some questions for sign in so I do a basic sign in here and I put in some of my information such as email address now Uh, 
and here is where it is going to ask for my first and last name and just do a setup with Eris and it will email you a verification code and once you've done that you are good to go after the verification code has come in is when it tells you that you should get all the pieces out for what's going to be your main router for Wi-Fi connected to your modem. And it tells you to plug them all in and you will have to unplug from your uh, main modem, unplug it, then plug it in, plug in the Aris Surfboard Max Pro as well as the Ethernet cable to the LAN port and then into the port for your internet. And once you start plugging everything in, it should reset the ports and start issuing uh, data going to your Wi-Fi. And I recommend if your modem is pushing out a Wi-Fi signal that you just go in and you stop the signal, turn it off. That way you have less frequencies within a close range of Wi-Fi. Okay, so now it's going to connect, and everything says it looks good so far. It's going to attempt to reach out to the internet to verify the connection is good on that end. And this may take a little bit. Do not get discouraged. If you do have any issues, validate your settings in your modem that you went ahead and basically unplugged, wait a few seconds, and then replugged it in. But this should take a little bit of time. So you definitely should validate that. For me, my first issue was the fact that this unit was previously owned, and I just went ahead and forgot that because it was previously owned, the other owner probably did a setup and they went ahead during their setup process, got to all this stage and it wasn't wanting to connect to my stuff. I don't know why that was such a big deal, but once I reset it to the factory settings, everything seemed to work fine. So after it populates, it's going to ask you to pick the name and mine's in the office, so I chose office. It has basic room style names. And then it wants you to name your Wi-Fi and choose a strong password. I say strong password. It should be strong. You know, try to make some uppercase, lowercase, add some special characters, some numbers. But, you know, kind of make it something that you can remember. And then it's going to try to get you to connect your satellite router, which it will tell you if the signal is not strong. So don't uh, worry about that. Place it where you think you need to place it. And it will tell you if you have to move it a little closer. Uh, but where I placed it, I didn't have any issues. And that was the same area that I placed the Neki Orbi. And then... It's going to try to reach out with that router to make sure that that router itself will be able to connect to the internet. And again, do not get discouraged. This will take a little bit of time. Um, and for myself, I did have to reset both the routers. There's a little small hole with the reset button. It doesn't say reset on it like it should. 
but you just stick like a little paper clip, um, something that's small enough to go in there because it's a button that needs to be pressed. So like a little knife will not just get all uh, far enough in there to hit the button. But once this process, you'll see it found and it did the connection. And now it's just, as I say, checking under the hood, which it's checking to make sure everything's good, no updates are needed, anything like that, and registering the device. Then you choose a name, which for me, mine's in the living room, so of course it's going to be living room. And then it is going to finalize the setup. And then you can do a speed test. Now on the speed test, you can do speed test per device. So you click the app, you click the device, and it should kind of say speed test. You can do speed test on the entire system, which is a system giving a speed test itself, which to me can seem a little biased because where is it connecting to? What's it really doing? Okay, so this is the speed that I get when I'm in the office, sitting on my computer, and it's from my cell phone, iPhone 11 uh, Pro Max. And as you can see, the speeds are way faster on the upload and a little faster on the download. But then you go to your satellite router, as I call it, that would be downstairs right now for me in my living room, in the same spot my Nikki Orby was at, no other Wi-Fi connections, and this is what I get. And for some reason, I'll explain just a little bit. I can't seem to get it to connect to 2. Point, or the 5 gigahertz. It only wants to do 2.4 gigahertz. I'm not exactly sure why yet. Hey, guys. I'm back. It's a different day because I wanted to go through testing on this Aris uh, Surfboard Max Pro. So, I come to the conclusion that I can't really recommend this for anyone right now unless you're willing to deal with the fact that they hopefully do some kind of firmware update, but I will ask them. The problem I'm seeing right now is in this room, I could get 5G. I go outside this room, I do not get 5G, which, you know, understandable. You got walls and other things that interfere. But I go downstairs to the other unit. I would assume the other unit has that 5G backhaul, but then it should have a 5G connection to that unit as well as a 2.4 gig connection. Everything that connects there is only 5G. I literally disconnected my phone on top of it, just sat it on top of the unit and reconnected my phone and it had 2.4. Just so you can say, well, maybe it's your iPhone because you're an Android user and wanna, you know, say stuff bad about the iPhone. I tested a Microsoft Surface tablet here and it also, being a fairly new tablet, I mean, it was, just received last week out of the box from someone and I borrowed it just for this testing and lo and behold, connecting it downstairs right next to it, it would not get the 5G. And you're asking, well, what's the big deal without getting the 5G maybe because you don't really understand. Well, the 5G is where you're gonna get your maximum speed. So with 5G, I can achieve close to 500 uh, megabits per second. With 4G, I were I was getting roughly 80 was the highest I've seen when I was partly away from here and downstairs I was getting 60 to 70s on up and download. And I mean, granted, that's actually pretty decent for having Wi-Fi, whereas some people in hotels and other areas don't even get anywhere near that. But when I should be getting somewhere in the realm of four to 500, at least 300 where my wireless AC routers were. Hey guys, I am back and I just wanna give a quick update. 
So I had this video up before and now I updated the video to change this ending here because Eris sent me a new router to replace one of the other two. Now, as you may or may not know, on the bottom, they are all the same. They have a WAN connection, which is where your internet goes. If you have two gigabits per second coming in your house, you can do link aggregation. So you can have a secondary um, one plugged into your router to give you two gigs, one gig each. And then you have two other ports that are primarily used for your devices to connect. Both routers are the same, so it doesn't matter which one of these units you're going to use as your main router or your satellite router. Well, this one right here was damaged. I don't know, I shouldn't say damaged, but it wasn't working correctly. Uh, the box didn't seem damaged or anything. Um, it wasn't uh, an issue with it where I couldn't get the 5 gigahertz network to work at all. I tried everything. I went ahead and installed it as the main router, the satellite router. No matter what I did, no 5 gigahertz channel would populate. It didn't show in the app. It didn't allow me to connect to it on 5 gigahertz at all, only 2.4. So that means you're not getting your true wireless AX speeds because you cannot connect. So I contacted the Eris support on the text, or not texting, but the messenger that they have on their site. And that went nowhere. I tried two different people and in the middle of trying a third person, I decided to call them because the third person was telling me the same thing that the other two people were saying. And this is where you will get frustrated yourself when dealing with them uh, and their support is that this device is like a lot of other routers now where they determine based off of your device and this, what is the best to connect for the best signal and um, going to give you the best uh, bandwidth going to your device. And I tried to tell them, I literally put the iPhone I had on top of here and I got nothing. I tried a Surface Pro and got nothing. I tried my work um, computer, nothing. So I was like, there's no way. And then I told them I tried to make this its own router and had no satellite router, this was the main router and still no five gigahertz. And I at least had five gigahertz when I did that with the other one being the main and only router. And they still told me the same thing. So I called and I explained to them over the phone. Finally, someone that actually understood a little bit told me that they were going to go ahead and talk with their software department to see if it's possibly software they could upgrade or update and it could fix the problem. I told him I'm not sure, I'm doubting it, but looking through, it doesn't look like there's any issues, but I would assume it's hardware. About a day, maybe day and a half later, I forget completely because I've been at work busy. Um, they contacted me and said they were gonna send me a new one of these out. Um, the bottom base here is metal. Then you have a LED light right here. And then all this is plastic with your interior antennas and everything inside of this. And they said that they were just gonna send me a new unit. Took a little longer than I expected, but I was on mission and it came in. And as of last night, I set it up and this is the bad one. The other one was working perfectly fine and my speeds were way better. Now I will say, just to keep it all fair, I used the app for speed test but when I use the internal Aries app, I am getting as high as 800 and some odd uh, megabits per second. So over 800 on the download. And then my upload is close to the same. It's around six, sometimes 700 for my upload. But as you will see, I get way higher uploads on my app using the speed test than I get for the downloads. But some of that could be that there is stuff being utilized on the download, whereas not many things are doing crazy uploads. <laughs> so because there is a few devices using it and these are about as good as I can compare it on the downstairs. Now that's the only one that I'm going to show a difference is the downstairs and what I incur on the downstairs. But I can say now for sure that this is the fastest mesh system on the market and to date the best 
mesh system on the market. I do recommend if you can afford it, this is a buy. I had no issues now after they sent me the new one and I've had a full day of testing, walking around my room, walking outside into my yard, no connections were lost. When I get further away, it gives me the 2.4. When I'm closer, I get the five gigahertz and I'm either five gigahertz on the downstairs or I'm five gigahertz on the upstairs. But throughout my house, I'm primarily on the five gigahertz band with no issues whatsoever. So I do highly recommend this and I will show you the speeds and then we will close it out. And I hope you guys like this video after I show you the speeds because then that will be the end of the video. And if you guys do like this video, please help me out. Uh, look at my other videos. I have Amazon links. If you go to the Amazon links, anything you put in your cart, I get something for it. Whether I select it to come to me as cash if it's $100 or I select it $10 and over to come to me in Amazon gift cards, I will get that. And that can help me a lot with what's going on, having to pay my ex for the divorce settlement. Um, if you guys go to my Twitter, you will see that I have a, and in the description below, I have a GoFundMe and I put up my Robinhood app. Robinhood app is where you can use to get stock. So if you sign up there, you get a stock and I get a stock. So we both get a stock and you have potential of getting a high end stock of Disney, Apple, Google anything of those high end stocks and you can decide to keep or sell the stock and you can learn through Robinhood how to easily uh, play the stock market of buying and selling stocks. And there's a few good ones out there right now that I would highly recommend looking at. Um, and then, you know, of course I said my GoFundMe and uh, I've put in my cash app before, but I just desperately I'm trying to get this debt taken care of and figure a way to get this 5,800 without having to do a balance transfer. Like I think I'm going to have to do of putting her credit card and her name into my name on a new credit card. And I'm just going to have to go paycheck to paycheck, which means unless I can create some free entertainment that you guys might enjoy, this channel may not have some videos being uploaded for a good while unless someone buys me something or I can get people that bought something and will allow me to review it and then they start using it. So here are the speeds and thank you guys for watching everything.